So hello and welcome to episode nine, I believe. <laughs> if it's not episode nine, I will be changing the beginning of this one uh, of Mooncast. In this one, we're discussing a battle report, which is up on Yoldi Battle Reps. Um, interesting report. So Tom had come to Norfolk to Dicini, which was good fun as well. It's very good yeah, fun. Yeah, really good fun. Um, a lot busier than we expected. We expected like a nice little convention with just a few yeah. people and it was packed. It was really good. Solid demoing and yeah. some fairly good sales as well. So that was pretty good. So let's get that in. Start with. Then we came back to my house and we've, uh, you know, obviously played again Moonstone. Why wouldn't we? <laughs> um, and we took interesting lists. Uh, obviously, the best thing to do is to obviously highly recommend going and watching the Battle Report first. Otherwise, this isn't going to make a huge amount of sense. Um, I'll quickly, I'm not going to run over who we had, but Tom basically had a goblin gun line list. So we had a lot of shooting models. Fire Spitter was in there. Uh, Rybold the Troll, who's a new model with a big cannon on his back. He had a guy with a pistol. The goblin airship, which has got a pea shooter. Um, and obviously he took, he took Shabroon and a healer, which is kind of standard in goblins. Um, and I took, uh, I took a kind of, I, I originally intended to take a giant build. Of four giants, yeah, which I think would have been very silly. Yeah, looking at it now, the they would line. they would have just died. But I decided not to do that, and I took a varied human list. I took two giants. I took uh, Brunhilde and Dim and Dimmer, who are new. I never played with before, which is quite fun. And Friar Flavius is my healer. Flintlock for a bit of range. Kaufman for some board control, and Natty to uh, nick stuff. Mm -hmm. Not that you needed to. Not that I needed to nick stuff. No, not that I needed to nick stuff. So. Um, when we started the game, uh, we definitely said that it looked it looked like an inevitable loss for the humans. Uh, I I felt sorry for you, uh, to be honest, going into turn two with facing down with all in range, Rybold with his cannon that can do up to nine damage if you get yeah. a green three and all these plus positive evades, uh, yeah. meaning he was going to get four or five cards against whoever he shot at. I was doing all kinds of uh, bullshit with... Um, Shabaroon and uh, Fire Spitter giving out extra energy. So I, in the yeah. first turn, I managed to get the um, Goblin Airship up to five energy, so it yeah. could pea shoot five times. Yeah, and you got Dim and Dimmer down to one health. It's, it's only X damage, and one thing that I've noticed about the pea shooter, as you might imagine, is it's it should really be used against unarmored targets because that X damage is. It's so whittled down even by a minus one mm. to impact damage. Yeah, which is what you found when you were fighting at Dim and Dimmer. Yeah. Um, you fired it five times, I think you only did five wounds. And then firing Start, it. But that's still a good five wounds off him, but it didn't do, you know, we're, we're looking at originally thinking, oh, you, you, you could have done 10 yeah. or something. Had but... that have been Brunhilde, that would have been 10. Yeah. Um, and you would look at Brunhilde and Dim and Dimmer and think that they're about as tough, they're both giants, but that, you know, the lack of armour on Brunhilde means yeah. that she's shootable by the pea shooter um so i had the fire spitter in range of all these people with uh an extra energy allowing him to fire his flamethrower twice i had yeah. ribald in an uh within range uh with uh i didn't on the second turn which was the important one managed to get the because he needs two extra energy to fire his cannon twice so he needs yeah so you didn't get that you, you only got that two extra energy in turn one yeah where because you only can't really yeah. use it because i was out of range yeah but i was hoping to basically repeat my turn one in turn two when yeah. you were within range of me and then unleash a hell of a range of very frightening attacks mm. you know 2x magical damage horrible his cannon that can yeah, right cannon, nine, yeah. terrifying a pea shooter that's going to shoot you five times in yeah, a row. Yeah, with X damage. So basically, it's five X. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's not quite five. No, it's not quite five X, but yeah. it's 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 possibly even better than that. Because well, against an unarmored person, but against an armored, like if you try to shoot fancy hat with a pea shooter, you have to get three just to do something. Well, you wouldn't fire it, you would you? Basically, yeah. you'd, you'd you'd move around and fire someone else. One but of the things about this goblin gun list, although it's got some very terrifying attacks and it's got ways of cheating energy on, so that you get lots of them. Same even with the pistol guy. The pistol guy with a one. So swiggity, energy, swig yeah, swiggity, swiggity, yeah. Can shoot, reload, and shoot again. So you can put out a huge number of attacks, but they're all eight-inch ranged attacks. Mm. 
Um, so you kind of only really get that one opportunity where everyone's now in range. Um, and it's only before they're then in combat or something. Yeah. Um, and and I had no melee at all in this list, so I was you know worried that maybe you would close in with those. Yeah. Giants. Which is what I was trying to do, you know, I, I tried to draw them in with a shower of gold, yeah. but actually we only actually had one melee in that. Yeah. In that whole game, only one melee. Um, that's one more than my last game where we had none. <laughs> I think we had none. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, but I think one of the things as well with arcane is it's, which I, I say a lot in demos and things, is that um, it's safer to mm. play because you can just not play it. Yeah. yeah, you can you can just play it safe if you want to. You can just constantly play it safe and not take the wounds. But you there's also a much higher risk of just not getting anything off. Yeah. Like I think it was in turn two or three, maybe turn in turn two when you find my bolt and you only had one. Yeah, so you only did one damage. And and also it you're unlike to kill people often with arcane unless yeah. you can focus lots of fire onto one person. Um, Often the damage never gets to the really high levels that you get in melee, which means you put some damage on someone and then the healer is going to heal it back off quite yeah. quickly. So, you, you know, I thought I had enough fire that I'd be able to focus. And I did take... You did, yeah, 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 yeah. You, you, you took out uh, Dimmer Dimmer and Rival and um, Brunhilde, but as we said in the battle report, it did take you 76 activations. Yeah, well, it took me all of my... Yeah, all six of my characters... Um, um, apart from Swiggity, basically, it took it took your three yeah. other shooters to do it. And then in, in the meantime, I was mostly ignoring Moonstones. Yeah. And, and then suddenly that caught up with you. Suddenly, yeah, unexpectedly, having thinking I was going to be in a great position. I tell you where it turned was when you put hesitation on Fire Spitter because yeah. he was about to. He was about to kill Dim and Dimmer basically straight yeah. away. Um, I mean, Dim and Dimmer then didn't do anything. He just walked up and hit Rybold once and died. But yeah. it gave me an activation. Yeah, I don't know how significant that was. It felt like the turning point where I suddenly went, oh, I'm not just going to murder everyone in the sense of... Um, yeah, I think and, I think for me, the turning point was that first bag of gold. <laughs> yeah. Um, the bags of gold really hampered you from being able to come after the ones that had my moonstones. Uh, that I had the moonstones with. Annoying. Um, interestingly, I only had one shooter, and he did, he did better than yours, because <laughs> by himself he killed the airship. <laughs> I mean, the airship because I happened to get a blue three both times, yeah. a green three both times, I think, or the green two. The airship is very vulnerable to uh, enemy fire. Yeah, you know, if you come no defensive buffs, and if you come against a, a melee heavy list, and we've seen a lot of very successful melee heavy lists in the tournaments, mm. um, then the airship is great. But when you're facing against other effective shooters and it, yeah. it's it's the kind of thing you'd never take against gnomes yeah because <laughs> quarrel's just gonna one, murder it at and... one point we were talking about doing a gnome gun line versus a goblin gun line and that would have been a really interesting game um but i think the gnomes would have definitely dominated because they got so much more range they mm. can start focusing their fire in on one target straight away from turn one yeah i mean in, in the end it, it would have been it would have been interesting obviously but i think would we have both made the mistake and it would have been who can grab the moon sense in turn four? Yeah. I mean, that was undoubtedly my biggest mistake. I thought I had enough firepower that I was going to table you. Um, but I didn't. I had enough firepower to kill two giants. Well, you killed Kof Kaufman as well in the end. In the end. Um, but, but I think the thing is, by, by, that point, by that point, I already had the moon stones yeah. and, and I'm already running away with them. Um, and and you, I think, uh, yeah, you didn't, you didn't, when you were moving your big gun guys you weren't moving them towards moonstones <laughs> you were moving them towards my people so yeah. there was the, there's the moonstone which we can see now because we're still looking at the board the moonstone by the house with the little bridge yeah. well you didn't move anyone near it so that's that's no. a, a moonstone with four one that's stuck because and the moonstone at the back is stuck so yeah. and that was two moonstones that were kind of out of the game so i and i was thinking about i turn one i was very much can i just survive this <laughs> yeah. turn two i was thinking oh wait a second if i can get that and survive and that and survive the, the thing is, there was a lot of quite high-numbered moonstones on my side of the table. Yeah. And I thought um, I would ignore them, because if I spent all the energy digging them up, then I wouldn't be shooting anyone, and then you'd yeah. be in my face, and then I'd be losing in melee. So um, it could have been, you know, different moonstone scatter. It might have, you know, I still think this build is really good. Mm. Shavaroon combos so nicely with 
ribald because although he's a troll he's, he's a, also the goblin also yeah a goblin. he gets the goblin um, mischief and and can be transcombobulated and stuff so yeah no he is yeah and, definitely um uh fire spit is always great with shavaroon mm. all the time um I, I was very tempted to try c6 steve in this list because it's one more person that can give an extra energy yeah c6 would and, be quite and, good it would i'd potentially i'd potentially give you another me. melee option well, potentially, I'd potentially, potentially drop um, the mortician for Beaky for a slightly more reliable healer. Yeah. Because he, unless he's unless he's been given the extra energy, he can only ever do healing once. Um, I mean, he's got Rigo Mortis, which obviously is quite fun, and it you know it helped deal with. I oh, know it didn't help deal with Kaufman because you got the catastrophe, but yeah. it could have helped deal with Kaufman. He, I mean, I've played games with the mortician recently, and he's been an absolute star player. Mm. Um, generally he only gets good when your characters start dying because that's when he gets the yeah, energy yeah. and and that's the thing is I kind of knew that and I thought I don't need to kill you because yeah. I don't want him to get any better and, and if your if your characters aren't dying he's vastly worse than Beaky Bobby Yeah. but if your characters do start dying suddenly he can pull off these really powerful spells and he can mm. bring your people back and it, mm. he can be great um, but yeah he was definitely not particularly impressive in this game yeah, I mean, for me, Kaufman was really... To me, I, I think Kaufman, was, for me, was the one that made it. Um, putting those bags of gold down, both of them. I um, mean, the second one wasn't quite as powerful, and we actually realised afterwards I could have moved Kaufman further away because I measured this jog as two inches rather than four inches because yeah. I realised he wasn't carrying a moonstone. But we decided that Tom could just flame him anyway for you fun. Were, so. You were so used by that point to everyone on your side Having, I was used to everyone carrying a moonstone. I was used that their jobs were too. Yeah, I was used to everyone carrying a moonstone. But it, the interesting thing was, um, I mean, Brunhilde, I would kind of say that every character in my troop did what they're supposed to do. Hmm. Um, Brunhilde and Dim and Dimmer just got in the way and took a lot of damage and then died. Kaufman messed up your movement. Yeah. Um, Natty got a moonstone and legged it. Yeah. Flint lock got a moonstone and shot someone. Yeah. And Friar he did a little bit of healing. Did a little bit of healing. Got some moonstones and legged it. it. Yeah. And they kind of all did exactly what they're supposed to do. Mm. Um, I think yours kind of did as well, but they didn't do it quite as well because you didn't get necessarily get the cards you wanted. And mm. um, and you were messing me up with Kaufman, which was you know. Not insurmountable, but it was a thorn in my side the whole time. Yes, well, it meant there were several times. There were several times in the game where you were saying, "Oh, I can, I can move the airship up here," and I was yeah. like, mm, "You can't," yeah. <laughs> because you have to get rid of that. You know, and that was constantly. It was also constantly making you rethink and question what you could do, okay. and, and then you doubt things, and it's getting yeah, in your head. And your activation order, you know, you, you think I've got this plan, I'm going to do this and then this, and you're like, "Oh, I can't," because I've got yeah. to deal with the bag of gold first of all. Yeah, I'm trying to think if I would... Ch- I, I, I would potentially change in this list uh, Brunhilde for Gotchka because he's also got armour. Yeah. And then If you knew you were facing... If I knew I was, if I knew I was facing a gun line, yeah. If he was facing a peace shooter in a gun line, then yeah, I would... Um, uh, yeah, potentially bring Gotchka instead as just a slightly slightly more resilient than Brunhilde. Mm-hmm. Um when, but obviously I didn't Br- really obviously didn't really use Brunhilde particularly I mean, apart from just as a meat shield. So Br- Brunhilde um obviously is a little bit like Gotchka, but she's also your original plan was to bring a giants list and she yeah. buffs other giants. Yeah. yeah. So Yeah, because she didn't really get a chance to do any of her stuff. Her Shuttle um, Stone's really good. Yeah. yeah. Really. She didn't get a chance to do any of her other stuff really. But she still did kind of what I wanted to do, which was just stand there and take the damage. Mm. Um, and it also meant I couldn't really target Kaufman, even though I would have quite liked to, yeah. while she was around, because she, you would have just taken the wounds on her anyway. So I yeah. might as well target her because she's a bigger yeah. and easier target. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, to some extent, Natty, she potentially could have done more, but she got but, that one moonstone. I didn't need her to do anything I mean, else. At one point, I thought about her coming across and getting that moonstone that was one in front of Kaufman and then going back. Yeah. But there's, then she was a bit close to everything. There's always one character who you like. Oh, they didn't really do very much, but they did because they they were the one that. Oh yeah, yeah, no, no, she did not. No, no, I, no, she did because um, she picked up the moonstone and then because because the thing with her is that she's actually quite good against an arcane list. Yeah. Because as long as she's near people, she's minus. Which most yeah. of the game, she was near um, near either two or and three you have people. To spend an extra energy to target her. As yeah. Well, so so the pea shooter's only going to get two shots. It's not an impossible to shoot at yeah. really unless she starts using that slingshot. Yeah, which, which you, 
Yeah. You really grow. Well, you, 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 that, yeah, but you might use it to finish someone off that's on like one yeah, health. Just exactly. oh, I, I can finish off this, this guy quite yeah. easily, which is quite fun. Just but, for the bragging rights. If or if she's activating it. last and doesn't need to worry about it, you can then yeah. use it. But yeah, I wouldn't use it any other reason. But um, yeah, and I was happy with how that worked out, really. Um, and again, we were, we were surprised. I don't know if I'd change. I would say changing that list. My list, I think, would also work, would be really nice against other builds that aren't. It would work well in a, against a melee, more melee build as well, because Dim and Dimmer and Brunhilde are still both tough. It was surprising. And Friar Flavors is pretty tough. And Surprisingly effective, because when you put that list together, I thought, mm, it's a bit random. There's just a bunch of random characters that we haven't really played with very much. I was interested to see how they all perform from a playtesting point of view, but I didn't think, oh, this is a good like, yeah. competitive build. I thought mine was a good competitive build. Um, mm. And I still think it's got potential. You know? It's just you know one game with it. Yeah, but, I think what your list could suffer with is if you're facing against another list that has a lot of kind of controlling mechanisms, mm. um, because you're not trying to get into combat. So if you're, I mean, obviously you wouldn't normally know each other's lists. Or I, I kind of knew what you were taking, so I tried to cater it a little bit. I mean, I guess you, you you could have gone back and catered yours back again. I would I would have I would have been happy for you to say actually, well, I'm gonna take this one out then and yeah. change it. You decided not to because you wanted to try it out, but. Um, what you like if you're facing like fairies, for example, you'd be a lot worse. Yeah, you'd be drawing. I mean, the fire pit still gets three, I get to most of them, but Rybold's only getting one. Yeah, and the pea shooter's only getting what? Yeah, Rybold two fairly um, against fairies, and then two, and, but he gets a lot of shots off. So even though, um, yeah, yeah, so I, yeah, you know, I think he's gonna but, but I guess that, but the problem with him is that you're then facing a list that's probably got a lot of shots back. Yeah. <laughs> You know, he's going to die pretty quickly to, to Diana blasting him in the face with, with some horrifying visions, um, which wouldn't be ideal, but, but actually most people are going to die pretty quickly to that. <laughs> I think but, yeah. another issue with this goblin gun line uh, list, for want of a better word, when you've got strong melee characters, you can just run them straight towards the moonstones, and they're either going to pick up a moonstone if nobody comes and challenges them, or if somebody comes and challenges them, they're going to kill them. Yeah. With this kind of gun line, where I don't have melee characters, I didn't really want to run straight into that middle territory and stand next to Moonstones. So yeah. Come up and go. Because because I, I would because I yeah because because like, the fire spitter is not good in combat. I wanted and I would just I would have smashed him with Dim and Dimmer or with. I wanted um, to stand back a bit so that I had all of the Moonstones within my shooting range. shooting range, and have you come tempted in to come and get them? Yeah. But, you know, I just didn't quite pull it off. There was just enough that you could... Well, really, what it came down to is I, I was able to plant the bag of gold so you couldn't get any further forwards and then run far enough away. Yeah. So it's basically, I had that, that little bit of control. And, um, you know, yeah. even if you hadn't done the bag of gold, you might have been able to run away anyway because some of these guys are quite slow. Yeah, Rybold right right and Five Pits are only five two. And they haven't got necessarily as much energy. So even though I'm also slow, as long as I'm out of your range, I can still get far, far enough away. Because mm. I've only got to get far enough away if you're not to be able to blast me. Do you know what I might do with this list is go completely out there and put some like fencer in. Yeah, like a quick. A really quick yeah. melee character that can... Well, the other possibility is someone like Tito who will just go around picking up all the moonstones for you. Yeah. Yeah. Because she could go and get the one that's four. Yeah, okay, I'll take her two turns to get it. Well, she no, she probably go and get the, the the two that are one each. Cheetah would oh. be great, actually. Yeah, so but you'd have to take out probably probably Swiggity. Swiggity. Yeah. Swiggity. Uh, I mean, obviously, she can't be affected by um, Shabaroon, which makes it a bit trickier. But Swiggity was my my last choice. You know, I picked the other five, and I was like, oh, who will be in the sixth slot? So he would be the one that I would. Yeah. Most easily. Trying to think if there's anyone else that's got. I think of the new the new stuff as well. Um, I like the idea of a, yeah. I think a fairy could be quite fun in there. Like yeah, T two or or wasp as well would also be wasp wasp wasp. Poss I I would possibly take wasp of a fencer because he's got a slightly bigger board control with a two inch mm. melee, um, and I think he's slightly more survivable because if fencer does get hit, she does die. Obviously, she's yeah. you no know, and I yeah. Another thing that I would say about this list that I brought is I would always have Shavaroon and Fire Spitter as the core of this, but I would probably only ever have either the airship or Rivold, depending mm. on what my opponent's got. If you're 
able to, you know, if you're drafting or you're doing some kind of um, version where you're able to select, you know, after seeing what they've got or after seeing yeah, what, yeah. what they've got. If I was facing off against lots of heavily armoured uh, targets with high evade, you know, like Fancy Hat and Gokshka, I'd probably bring um, Rybold. But well, you wouldn't bring the you wouldn't bring the the, the, bring the airship because yeah yeah no if you're facing yeah if but, you're facing a human list with slightly more um, damage resistance is it impact damage the um, impact yeah because yeah. I think I think Flavius got he's got um, natural yeah. padding yeah so impact is minus two I mean so he's pretty immune to the, the to the um, pea shooter and if you've got fancy hat got gut even I think Eric is even minus one. Is it yeah. is, is, she, is his leather? No, he's slicing. It's slicing, but but you could bring so even. And you, I mean, someone I, like Eric would suffer from the peach shooter. Yeah, but if, but, you, but if you got if you got Flavius, he's already a healer. Um, you could have uh, Quack would actually be quite good. So who else would suffer from the peach shooter? All of the pirates don't have armor. Yeah. All of the forms don't have armor. So those mm. new ones coming in who are great and do loads in fact there's not a things. huge amount of lesser vault that have armour no I don't try to think of any of them do have any defensive buffs yeah Lubar doesn't Boris doesn't yeah it's a very much a commonwealth thing to be honest yeah to have um, to have these really good passive abilities yeah because the goblins only have it on their trolls don't they and vicious midget and Doug the goblins have got a fair amount um, yeah yeah well, so yeah, yeah. And, and but like you say, it's it's, it's it's very common in the Commonwealth, isn't very it, to be to be tough because because the, the gnomes have got several because the gnomes have not just got some armor. They've often got people that like Joanna, who's minus one for every gnome animal. Yeah. I think another Mama Gimble's Mama minus Gimble's one, for, minus one. Ability, yeah. um, Young Jack's got a shield. Yeah, yeah. Like, Grudok and um, Morris don't, but they've both got tough as old boots, so they re regenerate two wounds at the start of the next. Grudok would be quite a one good one to put in this list actually against that. Because then you can never bluff. Yeah, <laughs> I always know what you're going to be casting at me if I'm if I'm if I if I stick to because mine were fairly close together, my my people they didn't separate too much mm. apart from flintlock was at the back, but if you're then trying to fire ribald at someone and you haven't got that three that you want and you're you're bluffing well you can't grab it so yeah I mean you haven't to get you haven't to just use the one you got on your hand yeah so um you could fire a grad I suppose because that only affects others doesn't it I think. Yes, uh, so so the one that Braddock, the one Smell that lie. others is yeah. um, is the sage advice. Right. So when other uh, friendlies near him um, bluff and get caught out, you can use the card as if you weren't caught out. Yep, yeah. and then the other one. So I've only used him once. Can't remember his other ability. Uh, so smell a, smell a lie, lie is the one that stops. Uh, people from being able to bluff when they're targeting him or friendlies. Yeah, they have so, to they have to show the card. That's that's yeah. the one I'm thinking of that's good. Yeah. That's what yeah. I'm thinking of that's good. Yeah. Um yeah, sage advice, well unless you happen to have Flintlock near him or or something that's not that useful, but uh, it is very useful with Flintlock. <laughs> but yeah. um uh he can um sage, yeah sage advice is great. The combination of the two of them means yeah. that, you know you're because 'cause you've also got I think is it you, old you old called old Calders who's got yeah. he's got something he's, he's got, got sage advice, advice yeah he doesn't have smell a lie yeah yeah those two together are quite fun then yeah. then, then you then you could have almost two little yeah. bits old, old of, of troop around around them it's really good um, yeah in the way that Gradock is really good he doesn't look like he's going to be that good but he is <laughs> yeah Gradock's ace I used Gradock in our I think I used him in our last game I what I took. no because I took a road build last one the one before that I had Gradock I think it was brutal <laughs> it, was, it was brilliant um yeah, I found that really interesting as well. It was really fun to play on the awesome board, mm -hmm. uh, and actually play a game on the awesome board yeah. and not just demo on it. Yeah, <laughs> not not true. just play sleepyheads on it. it was really fun, um, but also that was a lot of new characters that I haven't. I, I've played against a goblin mortician once. I've played against Swiggity a couple of times. Never played against Rybold before. Um, never played against a goblin airship before. Mm -hmm. I never played with either Brunhilde or um, Dim and Dimmer, I and mean, they didn't do a huge. Amount. I never played with Corton before, even though he's not. Yeah. Well, he technically is a new one, but you know what I mean. And Natty's only used once before. Um, Natty's done exactly what she did in that game in the last one. She just grabbed the and legged it. 
But um, she's a little bit like Tito in that once she's got a moonstone, it's just bloody hard to get it off her. Yeah. Um, and yeah. if she just picks up a moonstone and runs most games, but every now and then she gets to use her um, cut uh, purse cutting, I forgot what it's called now. Yeah, her, her signature, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, cut purse, cut she steals purse. one, yeah. Um, then that would yeah. be really cool. But if she just your harvester, because every troop really needs a healer and they need a harvester. Yeah. But also, she's not that bad in combat. <laughs> she's a weakling, which has five melee. Yeah. And then plus one piercing and plus one on rising attack. Yeah. So if you're not careful, she'll just yeah, shank you. Shank you, yeah. Properly shank you. So um, you wouldn't want to put her in against someone that's a very good melee character. But, you know, if you're trying to... If, you, if all you've got left is, like, a cleric wizardy person that's going after her, well, mm. she's probably just going to shank them back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, no, I like Natty quite a lot. I really, I really like her. She's one of my favourite... Um, from so one of my favourite new Commonwealth ones coming. Because um, I really enjoyed the rogue build in the last game. Yeah. Um, and it's she, she she's a Commonwealth. It's a shame she's a Commonwealth rogue. But um, it is a shame she's a Commonwealth rogue. But I think it makes sense. Otherwise, it'd be a bit too powerful to have her in the in the Dominion in the Dominion rogue build. I, I think. think. So. Um, I mean, she's not released yet. There's still time to make her joint Commonwealth Dominion. But I don't think the will. No, I don't think she needs to be. I think the, the Dominion have got plenty of choice in yeah. rogues. Um, with all the fairies they've got. Um, and. You can build, so you've got the Commonwealth Rogues and Natty, Loki, the, and Muradai, aren't they? Are your three Commonwealth Rogues that you can have. Yes. Um, so you can still build a fairly, like a half Rogue, half something else build yeah. is still fairly fairly good. But they don't have the Rogue synergies that the Dominions have got. No, only um, only Muradai, oh, yeah, give them Muradai. plus one Arcane. Yeah, that's true. Um, but you'd probably want it, I mean, if you've got Loki, you want Joanna really anyway. Because um, that's quite fun, sticking a forest out for yeah. her and then hitting them with it. <laughs> um, yeah, I got I, I got the gnomes in the Kickstarter. I'm looking forward to getting them. I, I won't have Joanna unfortunately yet. I'll have to buy her when it when it when she's released. But um, did you not get her Joanna in the tournament? Because I didn't play in the tournament. Oh. <laughs> well, I didn't I didn't play the tournament, and well, I, I I didn't mind because you, you actually you did offer me one and I said yeah. it's, it's fine because that was re- really early days and I was like I don't, I don't you give it to someone else mate because <laughs> like, yeah. okay. at, at that point I wasn't yeah. playing gnomes and Jack had one I, I'm Jack sure I've one. got one or two spare yeah I'm sure yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway yeah I didn't I didn't mind not having one because um, I knew Jack was going to get one Yeah. and he's my main opponent yeah. so only if I wanted to use it I could just use his so um, but yeah um, I don't think it's something else I've changed so the only like Kaufman, I think is pretty central to that troop that I had. You need him in there to control the board, otherwise you you can just do what you like, really. Mm. Um, the giants, I think, are swappable yeah. for Lubard or Brunhilde. I mean, I think I might try and set up in the next game. I have a Jack a full giant list. Yeah, I might take all four, all I four. I'd probably, I'd probably take all four giants: Kaufman and Fryer. Yeah, because everyone then has got loads of wounds. Loads of wounds, so really Kaufman hard to kill, still got a healer. And Kaufman Brunhilde can then really buff Kaufman. the other giants. Yeah. I mean, Lubard with Brunhilde is a bit horrible. Yeah. You know, you can get that rage off every turn yeah. pretty pretty, That's pretty really easily. Really cool. um, I mean, I d- it'll be a strange build because you won't have all that much energy. No, that's the only thing I was um, thinking. Is they've only got like two each. And um, you're going to be very vulnerable to... The big shooting. Big shooting. So, um, so it's not going to like dominate, but it would be really fun to play a, a, a giant list. With I think a couple of humans backing them up. I think one of the things that will be interesting for me and Jack going into the future, and also um, for the channel, will actually be more interesting. I think is that at the moment we've only really had we've had the playtesting pack, obviously, but more recently, but before that, we only had the original four mm. groups, the two factions, and I had all the. I had all the mix up the gnomes, Jack had the gnomes. So we every time we played, it was very much, well, who am I going to play with? I'll play with these, I'll play with these. Yeah. But Jack is now buying more of the models himself. Yeah. He wants to get the fairies. He's bought some yeah. more, he's bought some humans, I think. He, he's, he wants to collect his own miniatures. So I think what we'll see in the future on the channel is things like, we'll have blind lists. Yeah. So I'll bring a blind list. Yeah. I, can't, I don't know what he's bringing. Cause, because he'll have all the choice. Yeah. At the moment, he can't go. Well, I'm going to bring whatever I want because I might pick them and they're my models. Yeah. And they would have to have a discussion yeah. about how that works. Whereas uh, in future, he'll be able to because he's back in the Kickstarter at the full, so he'll have all the Leshevolt. I'll have all the Leshevolt. 
I've it's, got them names, so I'll have all the names. This, this side of thing is going to start to get really interesting. We're going to start to get meta, local matters and tournament matters where certain builds are known to be really good, so people are now turning up with the characters that are good against those builds. Yeah. Um, and that could either be, you know, you turn up at the start of the tournament and you've got a pre-built list and you, you just know, you know, know what you're trying to counter. Um, or it might be, you know, a drafting system or you bring uh, six models, you know, eight models and you choose five per game. Mm. Or, you know, all, all, there's lots of different ways we can do it. And yeah, I'm yeah. To experimenting with a few of these smaller local tournaments and trying some of these things out now that now that more people have got more models. Yeah, 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 definitely. You know, I, I really hope that the tournament scene can um, kick off a little bit with it, um, because I think like at face value, people don't see it as a as a tournament game. Yeah, because you've got the randomness of the drop. Yeah, and you can't kind of time each activation particularly because of the opponent. But as well, we, we as, as 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 you and I have as you and I have both needed. yeah. Well, as you and I have both seen, um, it doesn't make any difference. <laughs> it works perfectly well with just a 90-minute yeah. timer. And actually, if you look at a lot of other tournament systems, like Games Workshop tournaments work on a single clock. Yeah. And they're really popular. Yeah. <laughs> People go to them all the time. So, you know, if it works for them, and I think that you and I both came from Guild Ball tournament yeah. background where you have an individual chess clock yeah. for each, each player, and we were used to that really precise timing and thinking that... It, tournaments had to be in that way and they don't <laughs> no don't. as long as people aren't being silly I, about wasting time i do actually think you could do uh, a clock for moonstone i could i could see how it would work i just haven't been that keen on implementing it i just haven't felt yeah well we, we, we we've discussed yeah. that before about how you could do that and um and i can't remember what your idea was but it, it would so when you're let's say you're doing um uh melee where where you're both assessing your cards at the same time I'd have it. I'd have it always as the person whose uh, turn it is. You know, the person who's active. It's on their clock until they say they're ready. As soon as they say they're ready and put the card down, they can flip the clock over to the other person. Yeah. If they're taking time thinking about it. Yeah. So, it's, so the thinking time is always on the you know the attacker until they say that they're finished thinking and then it flips yeah. over. And same for the, same for the arcane. Yeah. You, know, you could say, yeah, they're, 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 called, they're called their green too and they're, that person's then thinking well, that's on their clock. Yeah. Which I think would work fine. That's something that may, well, so I don't know where we'll see each other next, but um, me and Jack could test that. If yeah. You want, you know, it's... We could, I mean, I've, I've thought about it for a long time and just never felt the need to actually add it. Yeah. There's an extra layer of complexity and it, I'm not saying it's stressful, but it can be not what you want in... You know, well, I think one of the nice things about, game. I mean, I, I didn't obviously go to the tournaments that you did, but um, the tournaments that I, I've done, what I liked about them is that everyone was really happy all the way yeah. through. You know, people, I, I was yeah, looking around at the same. game being played and everyone was smiling and yeah, laughing exactly. and enjoying the game as the game's supposed to be enjoyed. And, and, that is and I don't... I don't kind of kill that because you don't, you can't really chat. Yeah, and uh, that's the thing I don't, because I, I, you know, at, at the beginning of the tournament that I, during my first tournament, I very much said to everyone, let's make this a really fun event i mean those people were new as well so we didn't want to make it overly horribly competitive because yeah. we wanted them to enjoy the game that was very much that was before we came out on retail the last thing we wanted to do because you came as well the last thing you and i wanted to do was put everyone off the game yeah. <laughs> we wanted them to go buy it when it came out so you know and that's something always to consider but um you know if people don't enjoy tournaments well they're not going to go to them and if if you're if you are a, com a competitive player but you're not enjoying the tournaments you're going to, then you're not going to buy the models. And and the bottom line is, um, if the game doesn't sell, it's not going to keep going, mm -hmm. is it? So, um, but I definitely think there's a lot of scope for nicking some guild ball players to come play Moonstone and, and enjoy it because it's a similar feel with the way you move and yeah, similar and things, sort but... of game size and game length duration. Yeah, and with the possibility of actually being significantly shorter. And it's more scalable because you can have as many models as you want, you know, quite yeah. often, I'll, you know, say, we just have a quick game of four models aside. Yeah. Or quick sleepy heads. <laughs> yeah, sleepy heads, it's super yeah. fast. Or, or, or even faster with the mutiny scenario, yeah, that's, <laughs> which that's is men fast. mental fast, yeah. Uh, and that's done in 15 minutes if you... <laughs> yeah. Going home your drunk's pretty fast as well. Yeah, yeah, I imagine. I'm, yeah. Wa I'm waiting to get my drunk fits painted yeah. up with, and then, then we're going to play that yeah. since I've got it painted. But, um, yeah. Um, 
I don't think there's anything I want to add no, on top no. of that. I think that was a, it was a very, really interesting game there, and I'm I'm so excited about the new stuff coming out because um, what it's meant I've done because I've always kind of like everyone else has I played a human list or yeah. a fairy list and it's only more recently I've really mixed it up by using yeah. some of the new play test the new, the new paper dolls and it's really like opened my mind about it opened my head about it a little yeah. bit like um, when I bought the rogue list although it was mainly fairy it was a different way of playing fairies mm-hmm. it wasn't I'm going to hit you with spell stuff it was I'm going to grab some stuff and then leg it mm-hmm. <laughs> it was I'm also going to mess you up in the process but like Belladonna and, and stuff this, but... this game was an interesting one because normally you would expect the humans to be the ones ignoring the stones and the goblins to be picking them up and running. Yeah. That's yeah, typically that's... the way it is. Yeah. But because you're introducing all these new characters, it's totally changing the dynamics and there's lots of different play styles that's possible. So I think it's it's, it's good timing for it to come along. Yeah. You know, as enough yeah, yeah, definitely. that are now familiar with the current sort of basic place play style of the four yeah. uh, that um, that they'll probably be able to jump on board and enjoy the new stuff. Yeah, I think so. I think I think that all the new models of it as as the other ones are have all been very accessible. Um I think it'll be it'll be really interesting, I think, sort of next year, like two thousand twenty, when all these models are released mm. and then, then we're going to events mm-hmm. and we're seeing people bring actually they're not bringing yeah. Fancy Hat and Flintlock and Eric. They're actually bringing Ribald, yeah, and oh, whatever that's one example, but you know, but they're bringing Natty and the librarian, yeah, and the Gertrude instead. You know, they're, you know, they're, 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 you know, they're, they're, they're bringing just yeah. models that we've only just uh, sort of, you know, I don't know, yeah, I can't know what to say about it, but yeah, it's really interesting, I think, yeah. to see in the, ne- the next year or so about all these new and when the Lesher Vault out as well, all these options and. I think we'll see a lot of Leisure Vault being played when they first get yeah, off definitely. Kickstarter because people are going to be really excited to use yeah. them. Um, and obviously the models are going to look amazing because the artwork's awesome. <laughs> so that's going to be really exciting. Cool. But yeah, I think I think that'll do. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Obviously, if you didn't watch the video, that's going to make no sense whatsoever. But <laughs> Well, some of it will, but yeah. Uh, yeah, cool. Hope you enjoyed listening to that. I don't know what the next podcast is going to be about, but... I never do. I don't plan any of them. <laughs> so, hope you enjoyed it and see you later. <laughs>